And, and when you don't know what's next in your life or you can't make sense out of what's happening, I mean, some of y'all are going through that with your job, and some of you are going through that with school, and then you thought it was going to be one thing, and now it's the complete opposite thing, and somebody you counted on, they turned out to be an absolute snake, and now you're trying to figure out what to do about that. And, and the crazy thing about this is, in the stories that we tell ourselves, a lot of times we will, we will substitute in the place where we don't understand, we will substitute fiction for facts. Be careful about selective stories. You know what I mean, selective stories? Leaving out certain things and then putting in certain things. You know, when you start thinking about worst case scenarios, you know, you start going in, in your mind and what if this? I mean, it can just come in a flash, can it? I don't even watch the news anymore. I check it once a day. I don't watch it. I check it. 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 I don't watch it. I check it because I found out the same people who are giving me the news are selling me the pills that I have to take after watching them. This is a grown up sermon. Once I found that out, I found out they are controlling the narrative. And then so we, we, we take the pill and the panic all on the same channel, the same screen, same feed. So I don't watch it. But I, what I do in my life is sometimes I make up stories to fill in the space about what I don't know. Okay. Well, the reason they did that was because da 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 ba da 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 And then I will make up things that might happen. And here's what I call it. I call it, I'm just being prepared. I'm just being responsible. That's why I have a closet full of, of batteries and socks. That's why I have kerosene in every room of my house. I'm just being responsible. So a lot of us, we write stories about our future that we haven't experienced yet, but we fill them up with fear, not faith. A lot of us, we write stories about what's going to happen in our life, but we write in the, we write in the genre of horror. We write horror stories in our head. Oh, oh no, I got a flat tire. Oh no, I'm gonna be late for work. Oh, they're gonna fire me. Oh, I'm gonna end up on, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna have a job. I'm not gonna pay the bills. I'm gonna be on the street. I'm gonna end up on drugs. I'm gonna end up in rehab. I'm gonna end up in on. My, my kids are gonna, my kids are gonna hate me. My kids are never gonna speak to me again. Oh my God, you just have a flat tire. There's a spare. Calm down. Stop the story. Stop the story. Stop the story. Stop the story. Stop spinning it. Stop. If you're going to spin it, spin it by faith. God is for me, not against me. It might be a flat tire to keep me from an accident. God is good to me. The Lord is good to me. Some of us, we make up such scary stories about our future. We could give Stephen King a run for his money. And yet somebody, somebody else will tell a completely different story about the same situation. Oh, I want to preach this so bad. I wish we had, I wish we had a little bit longer because I would tell you how when Peter thought the story started is not when it started. Look at Acts 10 verse 1. I didn't show this to any other service. Y'all are so spiritual. You are drawing the word of God out of me at unimaginable depths. All the way back to verse 1. Show them real quick. At Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius. Watch this. Peter's story started in Acts chapter 10, verse 18. The story started in Caesarea. Peter's story started in Joppa. The story really started in Caesarea. God is doing stuff right now in places you know nothing about. God is putting you on the mind of people right now who are not even in this zip code. God is a lot. He is directing your paths right now. There's a hole in your story. You don't know what goes there, but God does. Shout if you know that the story started before you got here. God said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. So I just want to talk to you about your story. I want to talk to you and, and talk to you about selective stories because 
you don't get to choose every situation in your life. But you get to choose the story. Well, no, I don't. I didn't choose for my dad to walk out. I didn't choose for them to break my heart. I didn't choose to. Be. That's a situation. I'm talking about a story. Jesus. Jesus. One of our good friends in ministry lost their ministry last year. He made some horrible decisions. They had to move across the country. They had to leave everything. Of course, his wife didn't do anything wrong, and she lost everything, too. Right at the same time this was happening, she was diagnosed with cancer. It made me mad at God that this was happening. You're not supposed to be mad at God. He's a big boy. He can handle it. Bunch of fake saints talking about, well, you're supposed to tell God how you really feel about it. Just tell him. I don't like this. This makes no sense. That's why people don't pray, because they don't have permission to pray what's really on their heart. You're going to talk to somebody about it. You might as well talk to God. You might as well talk to God. You might as well get it out and detox so it doesn't destroy you. You can tell him. Tell him about your troubles. Tell him about your tears. Tell him about those, those things that you don't understand. Give him space to explain it. Give him time. And so while I was getting mad and kind of wondering, like, this doesn't make sense. She didn't do anything wrong. She doesn't deserve this. I don't get it. She's being stripped of everything. This is not slow Wi-Fi. The stuff we complain about. Cold Starbucks. The stuff we complain about. This is like she's losing. She's lost her community. She's lost her ministry. She's lost her familiarity, the, the, the town she grew up in, and gets cancer moving to the other side of the country. By the time that we talked to them about it, what annoyed me was she wasn't mad. <laughs> you know, I had my face on. She was smiling. I'm like, why are you smiling? She said, insurance. I said, who? <laughs> she said, if we hadn't lost the ministry, we wouldn't have moved across the country. And if we hadn't moved across the country, I wouldn't have got on this other insurance plan. And our old insurance didn't cover it. And the best doctors were in the town that we moved to. And if I wouldn't have been in that place, the best doctors. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Don't clap. I'm not done with this yet. While she's saying this, I'm shaking my head. I'm not doing it like where she can see it. I'm just like, I still don't, I still don't like this. Mm -mm. That doesn't make any sense. If God can move you across the country, he can keep the cancer from coming. Y'all aren't going to be real with me today? If God can get you across the country for better insurance, why can't he keep you from, from having cancer to begin with? I thought about that thing for months, and I thought about how it's still not fair. If God can part a Red Sea, but the best he can do is get you a better benefits package. I didn't like it. I was working on this sermon. I called them yesterday. I said, I'm still mad about this insurance thing. Tell me again. Now, every time I call them, every time I call them, they, and I call them to encourage them, they make, they, they make me mad because they start encouraging me. I'm like, stop it. This is my deposit into your encouragement piggy bank. Stop it. You know, like when you're trying to unlock the door and somebody else is pulling on you. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Canceling each other out. Stop it. I said, I just don't get it. If God could get you across the country, why you have to lose everything? I don't get it. She said, you don't have to. It's not your story. LJ, do some uh, finger stretches real quick, because I think somebody needs to shout and tell the devil, it's not your story. It is not your story. It is not your story. You don't have to understand my praise, because you don't know my story. You don't know what he did for me. You don't know how he kept me. You don't know what he kept from hitting my life. You don't know what he rescued me from. 
You don't know how many ways he made when nobody else was looking, when nobody else cared. You don't know my story. And I feel the spirit of the Lord saying, tell the devil, I want my pen back. This is God's story. This is a redemption story. This is a grace story. This is a blessing story. This is a gospel story. This story does not end in defeat. I've got a resurrection testimony. Hey! You don't have to shout, it's not your story. But if God carried you through some dark nights and dry places, Give him a shout right now. Shout. Let you know your story. Hey, thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share this video with a friend. And don't forget, you can join me live every Sunday. Thanks again for watching.